Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. A Florida judge allows the health care lawsuit to move forward. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs for Liberty Council and associate dean for the law school. Well, Matt, Judge Roger Vincent in Pensacola, Florida, denied the federal government's request to dismiss all of the claims raised in the Obamacare lawsuit that was filed by Attorney General Bill McCollum in Florida and joined by 16 other state attorneys general. And in this case, it's a great news because the essence or the core of the case, namely that Congress does not have the authority to require these individual and employer mandates, exceeds its power, um, that part is moving forward, and that's the core of the case. That's the crux of the case, that uh, really the government has overreached in an unconstitutional fashion here, and are, as uh, Judge Vinson pointed out, are really using as a pretext the Commerce Clause uh, in order to try to uh, uh, force all every American to actually engage affirmatively uh, in in purchasing goods or services, which is, you know, if the, if the commerce ca- clause can can compel people to do that, then the commerce then the federal government can use the commerce clause to gain control over people for anything. So yeah, that's exactly right. In fact, the judge uh, at the very beginning of this case he says that this bill was passed behind closed doors with late night votes by people who didn't read the vote through coercive pressure. And uh, he says some people believe that uh, this will greatly expand the size and reach of the federal government and is intended to create a socialized government health care system. That's how he begins uh, this case. And then, of course, he ultimately concludes that this case is uh, permissible to go forward. Now, this doesn't rule on the ultimate constitutionality, but what the government did was they filed this motion to dismiss, claiming that there was no grounds for this case. In other, there, in other words, there was no legal basis for them to bring this case, which is what the government did in Virginia. And Ken Cuccinelli there, the attorney general, won his motion to dismiss. Then the same thing happened in Florida. I just argued our case on our motion to dismiss that they filed against us last Friday. We'll be waiting for a ruling on that case. But now we've got two other cases that were filed on the same day as our case, Virginia and Florida with the other attorneys general, and then now our case. So uh, that's a a good uh, move forward. Now, there is this other case in Michigan where the judge went the other way. But I believe at the end of the day, uh, whichever case gets to the Supreme Court, this law will be ruled unconstitutional. Well, that's right. And, and Ken Cuccinelli, the attorney general for the state of Virginia, is arguing his case in the Eastern District of Virginia. Uh, or Liber- in Richmond. Area. In Richmond. Liberty Council arguing in the in the Western District. In federal Lynchburg. In, in Lynchburg. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which case makes it to the Supreme Court first. But back to uh, Judge uh, Vinson real quickly. Boy, he had I, some, if it's any indication as to what... Uh, where where the uh, his court may go, he had some very strong language against uh, the government in this, saying that they were using I'm quoting here Alice in Wonderland arguments um, against the <laughs> twenty state lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of Obamacare, basically saying they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. First they said it was a tax, then they said it was a penalty. Right. Uh, well, first they said it was a penalty, and then when, then they, then tried, to it, then they tried to say it was a tax so that they could uh, invoke the Commerce Clause. And he said, well, you can't publicly go out and say polit- in, a, in a political setting that it's a penalty, and now come in here to the courtroom yeah. and sh- because it's expedient, well, change it to a tax. So they're just well, they all over that, the board. They did that same thing in, in Virginia's uh, suit in Richmond where the judge rejected that as well because it actually is a penalty if you don't uh, buy health insurance or you don't have health insurance that is up to a certain level that they want, both for the individual as well as for the employer. But then when they came to court, they said, well, actually, it's really a tax. And the reason why they wanted that is because there's a thing called the Anti-Injunction Act, and it prohibits uh, actions against a tax. So you can't have an injunction against a tax. Uh, tax that's levied unlawfully, 
you have to pay the tax and then apply for the refund. And then when you don't get the right refund, then you sue for the difference. And so they were trying to switch it to a tax. And the judge says, well, no, no, you can't do that. And in fact, this is clearly a penalty. It's a penalty that's placed on individuals and employers for not having the right kind or having health insurance. Now, the other thing, and I think this is the crux of the case. It happened in Virginia. It happened in Florida. And they also argued it in our case. And that is this. They said, well, um, the fact of the matter is, even though we have people who do not want to participate in the market, they don't want to have health insurance. They want to pay their own health uh, insurance, recovery and and, um, treatment out of their own pocket. They don't want to have an insurance policy covering it. They said at some point in time, uh, they will ultimately need health care. And either they're going to pay for it themselves or they're going to pay a reduced amount or they'll ultimately end up not paying at all and somebody have to pick up for it. So consequently, since at some point in their life they're going to need some kind of health care treatment, then we need to have them part of the system so that we can expand the pool and increase the size of the pool. Socialism. (laughs) Yeah, so that they say the cost can go down. But the reasoning here is like this. They bought GM to try to bail it out. Now, if they forced all of us to buy GM motor vehicles, well, it would certainly help the profitability of GM. We wouldn't have to bail out GM. We all are going to be using transportation at some time or another. We'll all ride in some kind of a vehicle at some time yeah, or another. Yeah. So why not force all of us to just buy a GM? Well, that's a, it's a, 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 a perfect analogy. And of course, what does that do to Ford? What does that do to Toyota? It, it drives them out of business. And going a little further with your analogy, that's what the federal government is trying to do here with health care, is drive all private health inter- uh, healthcare enterprise out of business, health insurance out of business. And, and eventually, as Barack Obama said, and I'm quoting He says, quote, I happen to be a proponent of a single payer health care system. That's pure socialized medicine out of. And of course, that's obviously what he's what he's trying to get us to. And, you know, Matt, uh, many in Congress that even voted in favor of this knew their attorneys, a number of government attorneys came out with uh, an analysis of this saying, you know, this is pretty dubious. This uh, could be ruled unconstitutional. And uh, and, uh, you'll remember last year, a reporter had the temerity to ask uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, quote, Madam Speaker, where specifically does the Constitution grant Congress the authority to enact an individual health insurance mandate? A very good question, especially based on what attorneys had, had determined. And and her only reply was, are you serious? Are you serious? She just danced around the question and, and, and wouldn't answer it. <laughs> yeah, he is so, serious. So, yeah, well, now Judge is Vincent serious. is saying to the government, are you serious? Yeah, are yeah. you serious? Well, you know, the same analogy could go to Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, and it was the largest bankruptcy in the history of America that affected the financial markets. We all participate in some kind of economic financial market in some way. We all benefit from it, even if we're not direct participants. So why not have every one of us buy a share of Lehman Brothers? I mean, it's the same exact thing. If Congress can force us to buy a health insurance product of a certain brand, which is what they're really wanting us to do, then they can force us to buy anything on the basis that the bigger the pool, the more people participate, the cost of that entity will go down. And therefore, uh, whatever it is, it affects commerce. I mean, that's the absolute reasoning of this Government, and that's the socialistic mentality. The other thing that they've done in in trying to establish that the mandate is constitutional, they've tried to link it with the idea that they can regulate health insurance, and they already have laws that do regulate health insurance, like COBRA laws, uh, HIPAA laws, ERISA laws. So they say, well, since they can regulate insurance, then consequently they can also go so far afield to regulate this mandate and require this mandate. And so the mandate, they've said, and Congress has also concluded, is absolutely critical and essential to this core uh, bill. Therefore, if you strike the mandate without a severability clause Mm -hmm. in this uh, piece of legislation, the the whole thing goes down. It is the pillar on which everything else is supported. And when that goes, the whole system goes. Give us a call at Liberty Council at 1-800-671-1776. You can also go to our website at lc.org. We're going to update you more in future programs regarding 
the argument that I just did on the health care case in Virginia, uh, get involved in helping us to not only defend liberty by defending uh, this bill as it's unconstitutional as it's written, but also as we advance life and liberty in other areas as well. You can go to the website at lc.org, sign up for the Liberty Alert, sign up for the Liberty uh, Council Action Grassroots email, and also make an online credit card contribution to help support this ministry as we defend family, faith, and freedom. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 